Um, my name is Kate Tuckley and I'm here today because in September last year my brothers and my sister-in-law and I all went to Switzerland because my oldest brother Ken had a very sudden onset and aggressive form of cancer that left him within five weeks not being able to eat or drink anything. Um, the palliative care at home meant that he was in constant pain um, and just slowly dehydrating to death. He was adamant that he wanted to kill cancer and he would not have cancer kill him. And so in a almost international heist, the four of us um, and, my, and Dan had to hire a private jet to fly to Switzerland, stay in a variety of hotels and before going to the clinic where um, he, he died for assisted death and then we could come back and then um, return to our lives, I suppose, in the light of such a sort of horrendous a situation that we've gone through and the absolute mammoth loss of our brother. Um, I, it's always, so assisted dying euthanasia has always been a topic that I have been a supporter of. It wasn't until I suppose the, 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 the issue was for, thrust in my face that I realised how utterly ridiculous it is that this can't happen. When my brother said to us that he wanted to go to Switzerland and end his life, I didn't even think that there would be a risk of prosecution and it was only in the sort of hours afterwards that it became clear that actually what we were doing could be considered illegal we could have been arrested so already we were having to leave England and go on this journey leave our family and friends behind but then also there's a potential that we would have to talk to the police and the police have visited my sister-in-law and told her that the case was closed and talked to her about it. but even when the police visited they were I'm sure on the terminology they were saying assisted suicide rather than assisted dying and it's just awful I almost feel embarrassed now that I hadn't done more beforehand to, to help the cause and now I definitely want to make sure that anything that can be done should because it's absolutely insane that the same kindness we afford to our animals in vets we won't afford to people um, in this country. I cannot believe that anyone who sees somebody they love suffering can want that to go on. If people are suffering, they deserve to end that suffering. That suffering may be due to an incurable illness, it may be due to being like body locked, it may be due to some kind of degenerative disease, but if you are suffering, you should have the right to end that suffering. Um, we have so many rights in this country, and the fact that we don't have that one just absolutely boggles my mind. We need to make a change it is barbaric to force people to live in these conditions and we need to make a change so that that, that stops now. I understand that some people oppose assisted dying and I get that life is precious, it is the most precious thing we have and that should be protected. However, we don't, for uh, prolonging life, is actually quite different to prolonging death or prolonging misery and that's what people really need to think about how you're living isn't necessarily something that should be protected if you're living in pain and agony and you're unhappy with how that is and it's unbearable for you in that respect people need to take into account the specifics of of these conditions and yes life is precious i completely agree that life is precious i also agree that you should not be forced to live in unbearable pain i believe if there is a God, whichever God people believe in, wouldn't want people to suffer. Absolutely. If there are people who are worried, I know people can say about money and what that might do. And yes, the money is wrapped up in things, we can't avoid that. But actually we're talking about individual sufferings and individuals' rights, and people need to be able to stop that suffering and end their life in a way that they choose. I think if, if Dan was here now, he would be really proud that we are trying to make a difference. He was adamant, as I say, from the second he found out he was ill, which in Dan's case was five weeks from diagnosis to death because the cancer was that aggressive. Um, but it was, it was always his, in his mind that he would make that end, that he wanted to kill cancer and cancer wouldn't kill him. He was a strong person. He wanted other people to be strong and he would be proud that people are working to make this decision as much as he was quite proud of himself for pulling off an international heist on his deathbed. Um, he, it was completely unnecessary and the trauma that it put my brothers, myself, my sister-in-law through was completely unnecessary. And we just hope, and I'm sure he would hope, that if people can work together and make a change, that other people won't have to go through that unnecessarily.